Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Estelle and today I want to talk about channeling. So this is kind of part three in a three-part series I've made on mediumship, psychic ability versus mediumship and now on to channeling. These are kind of the three big themes of psychic and intuitive ability. So channeling is a subject that I love. I love talking about channeling. I have strong opinions about channeling and how I feel like it should be done and my experiences with channeling and my own my own troubleshooting, honestly, with channeling. So I hope that you would check out the others in this three-part series about the other forms of psychic ability. And But channeling is a form of psychic ability that is when you allow another being or another energy into the body to speak through your voice, to speak basically as itself the being, allowing the being to come through you to speak. So what happens is it is an agreement to allow another outside being to use your physical body to be heard and known. So rather than mediumship, you're Kind of talking to someone outside of yourself and you're just you're staying in your body and you're just communicating to someone outside channeling is where you let them enter the body and speak through you as themselves sometimes it can be trance channeling where it's like edgar casey when he would go into a trance and speak and it would be someone else speaking through him and then he would wake up and not remember anything so there's trance channeling there's also conscious channeling where you allow the being to come in and then you actually benefit just as much as everyone else by hearing what the being has to say. So that's what channeling is. If you identify with claircognition or psychic knowing, it is closely related to channeling. It's also closely related to automatic writing or just, you know, the clear cognitive writing where you just kind of know things and you just write them down. That is a form of channeling your higher self. It's a form of channeling your deeper inner layers. Okay, so that is clear cognition and, and the writing. That, that level of knowing is a form of channeling and it is as if you're channeling your higher self or a higher form of you. And we can have more than one higher self. You know, we can have a higher self that that kind of keeps going up. We can keep following those selves up to higher, you know, higher and higher beings. But the higher form of you, the more subtle form of you, can sometimes come out in the automatic writing or the clear cognition. Things we know or things you just, if you just say things sometimes, you're having a conversation with people and you're just saying things and you're like, I don't know where that came from. It felt very wise. I hope it's right. I don't know if that was me. Like that is often, that's often what happens with natural channels, with people who just naturally they're wired to channel their higher self or allow a higher spirit to speak through them. That's kind of what I would describe as someone who's already naturally wired to channel their higher self. I would say that's a person who has spent other lifetimes in meditation and working on cultivating the self. If you can call them an old soul. They have already spent time doing psychic development, whether they called, that or, called it that or not. Like oftentimes um, ancient cultures will call shamanism or shamanic journeying um, psychic development. They're, they're really, there's lots of interchangeableness between them. It's really only a cultural differences between the different, the different um, strategies, the different traditions. But it is all basically a cultivation of the spirit, a cultivation of the self, getting more aligned to the higher self. And that is when it that's when the lifetimes really kind of crystallize of the higher self. They're able to hold more of the higher self. And then if you've had past lives doing that, 
you come into this life doing that very naturally. It just flows through you. Claircognition or psychic knowing is a very subtle clair. It's a very subtle form of receiving. It's like blink and you'll miss it. It's easy for our thoughts to invalidate it. It's easy. Common society invalidates claircognition very, very easily because we're taught to kind of stay in the logical side of the mind rather than the intuitive side of the mind, rather than our intuitive knowings, our intuitive impressions. And they're so subtle by nature that they can easily be dismissed. So cultivating that, that sense of yourself, cultivating clear cognition can start to bring on the natural channel that you are. Now, what I say about channeling is I feel like it is our duty to learn to channel our higher self first and foremost. Channeling can be a beautiful practice. We, you know, allowing a higher being to come in and really change us from the inside out where we're learning along with anyone else who might be listening. It's a beautiful practice. But I feel like it's really important in order to stay grounded and in order to keep the channeling practice sustainable is to work through your higher self, to work through your guides, your spirit guides. Allow them to bring you up into your higher self. Allow your higher self to get to know you more and more to where it steps into you more and more, to where that becomes what you are channeling. I feel like it's really important that we learn to channel our higher self first and then allow our higher self to introduce anyone else that would be in alignment and in resonance with your frequency, a high frequency, that then you could channel rather than saying, here's what not to do. I'm open, whoever wants to speak through me, come on in, don't, don't do that. That really is not a sustainable practice and it opens and ungrounds the spirit body. If you are interested in channeling, get to know your higher self. Maybe start with your spirit guides, get to know your spirit guides, who are they? Get into meditation, get into yourself, how you feel, psychic development. Start connecting with your higher self and allow your higher self to start expressing itself through you in your life, in your daily life, as well as, you know, with messages to other people or formal channeling. I feel like channeling done well, done sustainably, is an ongoing relationship with your higher self. It should be a lifestyle, ultimately something that you find sustainable, something that works with your life. I don't want it to be something that keeps you from life or something that, you know, ungrounds you and, and, and makes you like shun grounded earthly life. That is not a sustainable channeling practice. And I, I know that sometimes people act like, oh, you know, this is more spiritual. Well, in my opinion, spirituality is very grounding. It makes earth life easier, or it should. Spirituality should make earth life easier. It should make social anxiety kind of dissipate. It should make getting your thoughts across and feeling loved and heard easier. It should make, it should make earth life easier, not, not create more aversion. That's a sign of ungroundedness, okay? And so... Whenever you start feeling, you know, ungrounded or like, oh, there's too many people I can't, you know, handle all of these people, know that that's a sign of ungroundedness. And actually more grounding is necessary. And perhaps maybe more of yourself is necessary. More inhabiting of your body. More inhabiting of, more of allowing your higher self in. One of the first ways to let your higher self in is to inhabit your body fully first. I personally do that through Vipassana meditation, which is a body scanning technique. But really, however, you can really just get into your body and really feel you, feel yourself, feel grounded, get into nature, all of these things. 
gets you grounded and sets the foundation for channeling, okay? So really focusing on those things first will help set the stage if you're interested in channeling or if you are a natural channel. So to go over what I have been, have what I've already said is to focus on grounding by getting into your body, meditation and body scanning, getting grounded in nature, you're sitting on the grass, bare feet, sunlight, water, you know, natural bodies of water, all of these things are grounding. And then connecting with spirit guides and your higher self, allowing your higher self, asking your higher self to come in and, and make themselves known to you, introduced to you. Something that I would suggest if you're new to this is to just get to know them like you would a friend. You know, you don't really meet a stranger off the street and immediately invite them over like or into your car with you, right? You kind of like, hey, how are you? Tell me your story. What's your life like? What are you into it? What, what are you interested in? What's your history? You know, like what's your story? I would say do the same thing with your spirit guides or with anyone who's kind of showing up to you. Get to know them. And then you can allow, once they have started really raising your vibration and once you have noticed, you know, in your, it, it's kind of like proof, like evidence in your life of really, um, a, and really moving forward, getting more grounded in life, right? Not less, more grounded, better situations, more... Um, you know, more clients or more, more purpose, more direction, more connection with loved ones and people just, and you'll know it because you'll feel it, right? And it's never, it's never something pushy. It's never someone who just comes into you. That's what you kind of have to watch out for. Your spirit guide and your higher self will never push in. They usually stay outside of you at first, like mediumship. They'll usually kind of get to know you first you give permission to let anything into your body for channeling. So you would have, hopefully, like you would have gotten to know your higher self first by getting to know their history. And that will basically give you your trajectory, your cosmos, um, your path through the cosmos that you have come here by. It will give you your history, past lives, who you are in a deeper level and then you can start to embody them you can do practices where you feel yourself stepping into their body like once you know that it's a trustworthy being you can start channeling them okay but you don't just allow anyone you don't open yourself up to anyone and you don't you don't experience someone just whoosh and pushing themselves in like that's not really that can happen often in when when people do psychedelics like mushrooms dmt that's when it can all it can sometimes they can be lining up down the door like okay like me next i want in next you know you have to really know that that's not necessarily your higher self or spirit guides okay sometimes it can be i suppose that's not usually what i see so it just so just like with anything else, take time, get to know them. It's like test the spirits in the Bible, that's what they say. So just really allow your higher self and allow you to be the autonomous director of the channeling experience. You don't want to be like, I don't know anything, I'm a passive, I'm just going to be a channel and open myself up. Really, that is not a sustainable thing. You want to be in the driver's seat. You want to be the autonomous one, okay? And that does, that takes work, that takes meditation, embodiment, development, psychic development, and grounding, all of these things. It's a balance. Like, as far out as you want to go psychically should be as far into grounding practices as, you know, or, you know, herbalism or other, like, sensual hobbies, maybe, like, working out, exercising, like it, you want to keep things balanced so that the body can remain balanced enough to hold the energy of your higher self and to really channel it. And you can allow it to be a practice that you grow. So that is my two cents on channeling. Again, you know, a little bit of what not to do. Now, if you have found that maybe in the past you have done that, maybe you have kind of messed up or you have, you found some like odd experiences, you know, or you have opened yourself up. 
No, it's never too late to set the boundaries back. Be like, no, I am, I am me. I'm going to start back at square one. I'm going to get to know how I feel, who I am in my own sovereignty. This is spiritual sovereignty. Who I am is who I'm going to get to know, right? It can be past lives. It can be getting to know your own past lives and your own trajectory through of the soul, your own soul's journey, right? And so all of this can lead you into greater awareness of who you are. And so you can set up boundaries and be like, okay, I know, I know maybe in the past I said I'm open to anyone, but that is not the case anymore. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> and you can set those boundaries now and really get back into your body where you feel every inch of your body. You know, you do body scanning starting from the head all the way to the toes, all the way inside to the organs. Okay, you get back into the body. Okay, and anything else that has kind of maybe been around, you can say, you know, thank you, goodbye. If they are your true spirit guides, they will come around later when you're in a better place, okay? They're never going to just, like, you'll never be able to kick your spirit guides out. You'll never be able to separate, you know, from your spirit guides unless you're really not doing any spiritual things. That's how you separate, that's how you separate yourself from your spirit guides is you ignore them. But if you say, I'm setting a boundary now because I am unclear, of, of who you are and I'm, I'm trying to center myself, your spirit guides are going to be on track with that. That is going to be what they want. They're going to be like, okay, cool. And so it's kind of a clearing. It's a self-clearing process, maybe even a self-exorcism, right? All exorcisms should really be self-exorcisms. We do our own clearings, right? So if you have to, if you found that things have been kind of crazy in the past, do this to get back to square one and just focus on you and, and who you are, okay? Without being pushed into by other other beings, okay? Sometimes we, we seek that out. Like we want that excitement of like talking to other beings. We'll just know that it it's not always sustainable. And that's the reason why I'm saying to kind of get back to yourself and get back into your body with something like Vipassana and grounding meditation, okay, so that you can build a sustainable foundation that is not, you know, infested, that is not um, full of other beings that you're just not sure who they are or what their intentions are. We don't, channeling shouldn't be letting other beings go for a ride. It, you know, sometimes people will let that happen because it's a new sensation and they, it's kind of cool and new things will kind of, you know, happen, but it's really not a sustainable practice and not really the best form of channeling, okay? So that's why I, I kind of give these, these cautions because we want, channeling should be something sustainable, something that makes your life better for the rest of your life. It shouldn't be, you know, something that is kind of cool at first and then it drops off into chaos. That's a clear you know, if, if you're going into chaos or if you've had institutionalization in the past, you know, if this has been part of your history, you absolutely want to set up the boundaries and focus, start back on just meditation. You know, say no thank you to any other beings for now, right? If they're your spirit guide, if they're your higher self, they will be there for you later after you've built your solid foundation with yourself. So all of that to set to all of that to say that channeling should be a process that is led by your own spirit, by your own spirit guides. I feel like it is spirit and higher self led and directed if done properly. And then if you if you've progressed and you've really learned how to, you know, stay embodied and you've learned, you know, your higher who your higher self is and you are practicing letting them in, sometimes they will bring around a new energy or new being to practice, you know, channeling. And then they'll leave. And it's always a very respectful thing. You always invite them in first. They never just whoosh, come in. Like that's not a good sign. That kind of tells you that they're pushy and that's not quite 
to the res to the high resonance of a higher self okay so just know that when it comes to channeling it's not really something you want to play with it's not really something you don't really want to play around with your body with your spirit you don't want to let something really run around in there okay so channel that's why i'm saying you know really create a firm foundation let your higher self lead the way focus on meditation and creating a habit of grounded embodiment before allowing your higher self to take the lead on your channeling practice okay thank you so much for listening and i will see you in my next video